Hello and welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson, your host. Most of us keep a household budget on paper or in our heads. Well, so does the City of Durham, which recently passed its budget for the next year and included a penny more on the tax rate for affordable housing needs and other small fee increases. So how will the city's new budget ultimately affect you and your family? Joining me to talk about just that and the work that goes into making sure the city can pay for most of the needs and some of the wants of our residents is city manager. Tom Bonfield. Welcome Tom and thank you so much for joining me thank today. You. Tom, I'm sure um, most of our viewers want to know first and foremost a little more about the property tax increase. But first, I want to ask you, how in the world does the city go about tackling so many needs with such a finite amount of money? Well, it's interesting, Beverly. A lot, a lot of residents, uh, as they think about their own uh, family budgets and those kinds of things, uh, think that the city manager's office uh, basically goes in, a, goes in a room and closes the door and comes out with a proposed budget. But we're really fortunate in Durham. And in fact, I think one of the reasons we've had so much success in delivering positive budgets over the last couple of years is that our budget process is extremely inclusive. Uh, from the very beginning of the process, when we uh, look into things like the resident satisfaction survey, the, the strategic plan, many of the research documents that, that are on an ongoing basis, uh, that starts the process uh, in terms of our listening to to what the community is saying about how well we're performing, where we have service needs. Then the, then the city council's involvement very early in the process with mm -hmm. uh, helping develop budget guidelines from the very beginning. So this process uh, really, really took, took place and began in earnest probably back in February. But it takes a lot of hard work. There's a lot of moving parts and pieces. We're really proud of the budget staff and all of the city employees who, who work really hard to uh, work with my office to, uh, to prepare and present a budget but ultimately it is up for the, uh, the city council to consider and the residents to be satisfied with. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty happy with how it went this year, huh? Very much so. Uh, for the last uh, two years, I think uh, in particular as the economy has started to improve a little bit, we've been able to begin to rebuild uh, many of the things that we had to cut out of the budget several years ago mm -hmm. and, uh, and at the same time address some new issues that, uh, that have emerged that we think are really important to the future of the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does the new property tax rate mean for residents? Well, first of all, we, as you indicated, we did uh, recommend a one cent tax increase this year. I'm pleased to say that uh, that tax rate increase is strictly for new, a new program around affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, we were able to hold the, uh, the tax rate around on the uh, issues associated with just general operations, debt, and even transit. Those tax rates did not change, but the tax rate for affordable housing, the additional one cent went into place. Uh, over the years, affordable housing has been a significant challenge to the city of Durham. Uh, we have many, many uh, needs. Uh, the, the city is, is very committed to, uh, to do everything we can to assure that we have affordable, safe, quality housing for the residents of our, of our community. Unfortunately, we have way more demands in that area than we ever will have resources. Mm -hmm. So uh, the one cent uh, uh, dedicated uh, funding for affordable housing will generate about two point three million dollars a year in new money that we previously didn't have to go toward housing programs and it will go a long way to uh, to meeting the uh, the affordable housing needs of many of the underserved residents of our community mm -hmm. so if i own a house say that costs hundred and fifty thousand dollars what does it really mean for my tax rate uh... to the, to the average uh, homeowner if your home was hundred and fifty thousand dollar taxable value that'd be about fifteen dollars per year Mm -hmm. that, uh, that your taxes will go up and we know that uh, people don't like paying more taxes but I believe that, in the, in, in, that we have been very responsible in the tax rates that we've proposed but more importantly uh, this is an opportunity for us to have transparency around that tax rate it will 100 percent of the new taxes that will be generated will go toward a hou affordable housing programs and we'll have complete transparency and reporting to the community as to how that money is spent now and over the next several years. Uh -huh. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, let me ask you then, a lot of our viewers may not understand why affordable housing is so important to the health of a community. Can you talk a little bit about that and explain you know, why well, it's such a good thing? Excuse me, the, the quality of housing stock is really what makes neighborhoods vital. Uh, where you have uh, housing in neighborhoods that is boarded up or substandard, mm -hmm. uh, there are many many factors there that contribute to uh, to all kinds of problems in, in in the community. And as I said, Durham, you know, has many great neighborhoods, but we also have many other neighborhoods mm -hmm. that have challenges with affordable housing and and the quality of the housing stock. Traditionally, over the years, Durham, not like unlike most cities in the country, relied on the federal government 
the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, to uh, provide funding to address affordable housing needs. Mm -hmm. But as we all know, uh, what's happened in, uh, in Washington, D.C., with deficits and all of the budget challenges that are, are there, as well as many of the challenges in Raleigh, we cannot rely on funding from Washington anymore to address our community's affordable housing needs. So while we still will receive some money from HUD over the next uh, period of time, we need to supplement that with this dedicated funding source, and, and that, that's what this money will be used for. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like a lot of people were um, in favor of it, or at least understood why it was necessary. It, it really was. Uh, I think the council, from uh, very early in the budget process, heard from the community about their willingness to, uh, to get behind this, uh, this, this penny mm -hmm. increase in the tax rate. Again, because it wasn't just going into the general fund to disappear. It was going into physical production of housing units, neighborhood redevelopment, the kinds of things that, uh, that make for a vibrant community, the kinds of things that many of our residents and, and uh, who, who may not even be affected by this recognize the benefit of and were supportive of. Right, sounds good. I, I know another um, group of um, property owners who will be paying an even higher tax rate are people who own property downtown. Tell our viewers a little bit about the Downtown Business Improvement District right. and what it means for them. So uh, last year, uh, at the urging of many, many downtown property owners, the City mm -hmm. Council adopted a bid or a business improvement district. Mm -hmm. uh, not unlike many, many communities throughout the country and in particular throughout North Carolina, uh, there is uh, a, a separate or can be a separate additional tax rate for downtown. And uh, in this case, uh, it really is about improving the, the cleanliness of downtown, uh, the, some of the safety of downtown, the mm -hmm. appearance of downtown, and to some degree the, even the, uh, the, the friendliness and the, and the marketing of downtown. Uh, downtown Durham has come such a long way in the oh, last yeah. decade tremendous improvement but we're really not where we want to be mm -hmm. and quite frankly we're not where the downtown pro most downtown property owners want us to be mm -hmm. so this uh, increase in tax rate of uh, seven cents uh, is going again to be strictly dedicated to improving the appearance the aesthetics the overall experience of of downtown Durham mm -hmm. uh, it only generates maybe about four hundred thousand dollars a year but that $400,000 a year will go a long way to improve the experience and the quality mm -hmm. of, uh, of downtown Durham. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know um, a lot of our viewers probably understand that we worked hand in hand with Downtown Durham Incorporated to develop this. Right, uh, the, the proposal actually came to the City Council last year from Downtown Durham Inc., mm -hmm. as well as uh, teaming up with many of their board members and the, uh, the uh, property owners in mm -hmm. the downtown area to, uh, to suggest this was something they felt was important they felt that, uh, that, that they were willing to be taxed to improve the, uh, the quality of the experience downtown. All right, coming up next in the segment, we're going to take a quick look at how this budget will help support some transit projects, as well as public safety efforts and large-scale maintenance projects. We'll be right back. loss, it's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level 7 in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You come. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more persuasive. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Welcome back to City Life. As the new budget year begins, we're taking a closer look at how some important projects are funded and what it means for you and your family. Joining me again is Tom Bonfield, City Manager. Tom, thank you so much for staying with us. Tom, just last month on this show, we talked with Triangle Transit about their plans to design a better bus service and what that means for transit riders. How does this budget support that new system? Well, the, you know, we're really fortunate that uh, this year we were able to fund the, uh, the study of that better bus system. Mm -hmm. And uh, that system, that proposal was uh, brought forth to the City Council uh, last month and approved. And it really was designed to enhance transit services, bus service, uh, at the same time enhance uh, on-time 
the on-time schedules, on-time delivery of the routes. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this is the first time in at least 25, maybe 30 years, the Durham bus system has been evaluated. And our partners, Triangle Transit Authority, worked hand-in-hand -hand with the city staff, with many of the active bus riders, to look at the, the efficiency in our bus system. Mm -hmm. And we're really pleased that we are going to, as a part of this recommended budget, going to be able to substantially improve our on-time performance of the Great. bus system, mm -hmm. substantially improve the additional routes on some of our more crowded schedules, and do all that without impacting the uh, the tax rate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do dedicate a certain uh, special percentage of uh, the tax rate to transit, uh, and this year the uh, the rate will stay the same, and the funding that uh, is available for transit uh, will uh, will still allow for these enhanced services. Still going to be a challenge to uh, to manage the system, mm -hmm. and I'm sure in a minute you probably want to talk about the uh, the the potential for additional funding as a result of the uh, the referendum last fall. But for now. We are going to have an improved bus system, improved on-time performance within the tax rates and the revenues that are available. You must be a mind reader. <laughs> yeah, that was my next question. I know a lot of people are closely watching what's going to happen in uh, Orange County and Wake County to see if they too will pass the sales tax uh, for transit as was done here in 2011. So if Orange County passes the sales tax referendum, what does that mean for Durham? Right. So first of all, let me say, a lot of residents still are a little confused. They say, well, we passed that referendum back in, in November of 2011. Uh -huh. So none of that revenue has, has been approved or has been implemented yet. That's still been basically put on hold. While we're very appreciative of the, uh, the referendum being so positively viewed uh, in Durham and Durham County, mm -hmm. uh, you're right, until something happens in Orange County or and or Wake County, uh, we can't really move forward with that regional system. So it is our understanding now that uh, Orange County has made the decision to, uh, to move forward with the, uh, the referendum in the fall. Mm -hmm. And if in fact uh, that, uh, that the voter approval in Orange County uh, falls in line with, uh, with what happened in Durham County, that will then be the opportunity for the, the transit providers in the city to, uh, to work very closely with the Durham County Board of Commissioners to begin to implement uh, the, the, the timing and the phasing of that additional sales tax mm -hmm. and uh, the additional uh, motor vehicle tax that was uh, contemplated as a part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly uh, for those of you who have, those are the, the, the viewers who have followed this over the years, you know that the first steps of improvement are going to be increased, improved bus hours, additional bus hours, and then uh, hopefully it will include the construction of, of light rail between uh, downtown Durham and downtown Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. And then in, as time goes on and if uh, the Wake County Board of Commissioners uh, moves forward with with a referendum and that's favorably approved then truly we will see a well-connected regional transit system that will include substantially better bus service but also uh, light rail and commuter rail throughout the region. Mm -hmm. A lot to look forward to but we're just basically in a holding pattern right now. Huh? That's correct. Yeah. Tom, let's talk about public safety. I know this budget supports some new public safety initiatives for the year. Can you give us some highlights of what is sure. actually included. The issues around public safety are always at the forefront when we talk to uh, to residents about what's on their mind. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do they want to be sure that the budget includes uh, public safety and, and continuation of funding for public safety is always at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. The resident satisfaction survey that we completed earlier this year, we were very pleased to see that uh, the results said that uh, in many cases well over 80 percent of our residents felt safe uh, in Durham, felt that Durham was a good place to live, were happy with fire and police and rescue protection, felt very, very safe in their neighborhoods. All good things, but that doesn't mean we can cut funding. Fun uh -huh. Funding needs to stay in place. So, mm -hmm. so I'm pleased that the budget that we uh, were able to recommend this year continued to fully fund all police positions. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've increased the number of firefighters by uh, three overall, mm -hmm. which is going to substantially improve response times of, of, of fire uh, equipment. Uh, at the same time, uh, some other programs that, are, that have been very successful and very important are continuing, a few cases enhanced. Uh, our commitment to the warrant control and serving past due warrants uh, will we'll continue in partnership with Durham County. Mm -hmm. The city has stepped up time and time again mm -hmm. to provide funding uh, to, uh, to allow us to have a dedicated domestic violence judge. And then at the same time, uh, many people may be familiar with what was called mm -hmm. uh, Operation Bullseye in Northeast Central Durham. Mm -hmm. uh, while uh, the, uh, the initial funding for that came through a federal grant, uh, we have included money in this year's budget that will allow a good portion of that uh, Operation Bullseye to continue mm -hmm. in Northeast Central Durham. And also, for the first time, 
uh, we will begin a, uh, a smaller version of, of Operation Bullseye in the Southside community uh -huh. as a part of, uh, of the overall city's overall commitment to improving the quality of life, the housing stock, and the safety in Southside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Tom, I know a lot of people uh, were really happy with what went on with the street repayment efforts of, uh, last year, and is that included in the budget, and will we continue right, with that? Right. So as far as the, uh, the street repaving efforts, of course, the citizens approved the bond referendum uh, or, you know, um, two years ago, I guess now. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a part of that commitment, uh, we said that we would uh, use the $20 million that, uh, that was committed through that bond referendum to repave all of the poor and very poor streets in Durham. I'm pleased to report that we're through the first year, partway through the second year, and I think we're about 25, 27% ahead of schedule. So I fully expect that, uh, that those funds uh, will be used up uh, maybe by the, uh, the fall and uh, in our commitment to the, uh, to the voters who approve that referendum will be met. But what's more important is that we made a commitment that we would begin building up ongoing uh, operating revenues to pay for future street paving mm -hmm. and so that we didn't have to continually borrow money to pay for what really is a maintenance kind of expenditure. Mm -hmm. So in the budget this year we've included 750,000 new dollars that will be dedicated to street resurfacing. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to continually continue every year to build that number up so that hopefully we can we can generate about four to five million dollars a year to, uh, to keep all of our city streets well paved and, uh, and smooth and running. And it is mm -hmm. something that uh, really is pleasurable for me when I'm out and, and talking to residents of our community to have them say, thank goodness we're finally doing something about city streets. Good. Good. That sounds great. And I know that ongoing operational budget was a commitment that you made and kept uh, back w during the uh, referendum a few That's years correct. ago. So I'm no, I know people are happy to hear about that. Right. Okay. All right, Tom, we're going to take another quick break. But coming up next, we're going to take a look at the water and sewer rate increases as well as the storm water rate increases and what that will mean for your wallet. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to City Life. In addition to a one cent property tax increase for affordable housing, Durham property owners will also be paying slightly higher rates for water and sewer services. Joining me again to talk about why these rate increases were needed and what it means for you is City Manager Tom Bonfield. Tom, thanks so much for staying with Thank us. You. Why were water and sewer rate increases needed again this year and what will it cost the average consumer? Sure. So what, what most people know, of course, is that uh, the water and sewer rates and, uh, and, the, and the, uh, the bill that they receive every other month from the city uh, pays, pays for all of those, those services. There's no other general tax uh -huh. revenues that support the system. Uh -huh. The city's water and sewer system is a very big operation, but also it's a very old operation. Uh -huh. uh, many residents uh, drive down Main Street may have seen some construction uh, just recently in front of the, uh, the Duke East Campus uh -huh. along the, or in the Hillendale Road area. Well, that project is replacing a water line that's over 100 years old. Hmm. Uh, and, and much of the inf infrastructure uh, in the water system, whether it's the water treatment plants, the water reclamation facilities, or just the overall water and, uh, distribution and collection system, is very aged. Unfortunately, over the years, the city has not kept up with much of that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we have to uh, have a capital improvement plan that, that puts that forth. The funds that had recommended with the rate increase this year, 2.7 percent is what it uh, came out to be. Uh, really the majority of that is going to pay for uh, either debt or those capital, those capital improvements so that we can have an infrastructure that is highly functioning. Mm -hmm. At the same time, as a result of environmental regulations, 
Uh, we've had to make some uh, improvements to our water reclamation facilities since our two sewer treatment plants is another way of calling, but really water reclamation. Mm -hmm. uh, they do discharge ultimately into Falls Lake or Jordan Lake. So we want the, the quality of that, uh, that discharge to, uh, to improve to be in compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean to the, uh, the average uh, rate payer? Right. Uh, for a tier three customer, it means a dollar and 26 cents a month. And uh, I know from time to time uh, people say, why do we always have to have a water rate increase? And the city's philosophy is that we know we have some, some big capital projects that need to uh, happen over the next several years. And rather than have a huge rate increase, you know, in the 10, 15, 20 percent uh, in any one year, we'd much rather just to have a very small increase, in this case the, uh, the 2.7 percent or $1.26 a month kind of rate increase, because we feel like that way people's budgets can more absorb uh, th those kinds of increases rather than, than, than bigger adjustments. But rest assured, uh, we look at the water and sewer operation, the water and sewer budget, just as meticulously as we do the rest of the property tax supported budget. We don't want to charge a penny more mm -hmm. than, uh, than we have to for, for water and sewer infrastructure. But at the same time, we know the expectation of our customers. They want to know when that water tap is turned on at the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink that the quality is there. Mm -hmm. They want to know that we're being uh, good stewards of the environment with the, uh, the discharges that we make with treated effluent into the, into the natural systems mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. okay. And it takes those kind of rates and it takes money to, uh, to support that. Uh -huh. And I think most people understand that. We hope so. Yeah, okay. Is there anything else in general you'd like to say about the budget and how it came about and why people should be in, uh, involved and, and interested even? Well, I mean, you know, it, it really is the, the community's budget, we always like to say, is, is really the, uh, the most important uh, public policy uh, decision that the city council makes every year, but that really includes the, that the residents and the community make every year. After all, the, the budget is supported by the community's money, the community's property tax, the community's water and sewer rates, the community's uh, stormwater fees, whatever, whatever the case may be. It's not, not our money, it's the community's money. Mm -hmm. you know, and we, we are committed to want to be sure that uh, we, we are good uh, uh, fiduciary, take the fiduciary responsibility to, 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 to look out after wherever the, the source of, of money is. And I'm pleased that, you know, based on the feedback we've gotten from resident satisfaction surveys, that the community feels that we're doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I hope that uh, there's opportunities for, uh, for the, the residents and the citizens of Durham to uh, take some time to, uh, to look at the results of that res resident satisfaction survey where I think we've improved something like 25% over the last six years in terms of the overall rating of, of, of the community and how we're spending money, how we're uh, providing you know, public services to the community. So the feedback that we're getting from the community is you're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. keep, keep, doing, keep doing it, uh, that way, you know, be responsible, but uh, but but keep progress going. And quite frankly, uh, in the, in this time uh, around the country, with what we know the uh, the recession that we've gone through since 2008, uh, it, it you know not every community is in a position to to be where we are. That uh, that resident satisfaction is continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, I think the uh, the budget process is just one aspect of that, but it's one that we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if our residents or our viewers want more information about the budget or about the uh, resident satisfaction survey even, where do they go? Well, of course, in this day and age, it's the uh, the old adage, uh, look at our website. Right. Uh, <laughs> we, we are committed to uh, complete transparency about all of our operations. And uh, I would uh, would hope that uh, that anybody who has a question to uh, to uh, to look at go to the website first. I think you'll find it very easy to navigate. Uh, but certainly at the end of the day, if you still have questions, uh, we are open to those at the city manager's office or the finance department or the budget office at any time. If uh, folks have a question, we'd love a chance to answer them. All right. Okay, Tom. Thank you so much. Very informative show. Great. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, that's it for this edition of City Life. If you have a comment or a future show idea, please reach out to us on our new Facebook page and let us know what you think. You can also keep up with all of the latest city news by following us on our new Twitter feed. Of course, you can also watch all of our program on demand from the DTV8 webpage or the city's YouTube channel. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you so much for joining me to learn more about city life in Durham.